something, false in everything. In other words, if they're trying to fool you about one thing, not only might they be trying to fool you in something else, but under that maxim of the law, you may conclude they're trying to fool you in everything else. In this forum, is at 238, President Trump urged protesters at the US Capitol to quote, stay peaceful, please support our Capitol Police and law enforcement. They are truly on the side of our country. Stay peaceful. And before we run the graphic, I just want to point out to you, President Trump's speech ended at 1.11 p.m. So at 2.38 p.m., by the time word reaches the president that there's a problem down here, he's out urging people to support the police, stay peaceful, support our Capitol Police and law enforcement. They are on the side of the country. Stay peaceful. At 3.13 p.m., President Trump urged protesters at the U.S. Capitol to remain peaceful. No violence. Remember, we are the party of law and order. Respect the law and our great men and women in blue. 3.13 p.m. President Trump's words couldn't have incited the riot at the Capitol. The day's events make this clear. Let's walk through the actual timeline. At 11.15 a.m., police security camera video showed crowds forming at First Street near the Capitol reflecting pool. This is a full 45 minutes before President Trump even took the stage on January 6th. Let me repeat that. Violent criminals were assembling at the Capitol over a mile away almost an hour before the president uttered a single word on the ellipse. You did not hear that fact during the hours and hours of the House manager's presentation, did you? When the president spoke, what did he call for? He called for rally attendees to peacefully and patriotically make their voices heard, for them to walk down Pennsylvania Avenue to cheer on members of Congress. President Trump went on for more than an hour, ending at 1-11. Now, why is this important? Because of all of the events that I am about to describe, they all occurred before, before President Trump's remarks concluded. At 12.49 p.m., the first barriers at the U.S. Capitol grounds were pushed over and the crowd entered the restricted area. At 11.05 p.m., Acting Defense Secretary Christopher Miller received open source reports of demonstrator movements to the U.S. Capitol. At 1.09 p.m., U.S. Capitol Police Chief Stephen Sun called the House and Senate Sergeants at Arms, telling them he wanted an emergency declared, and he wanted the National Guard called. The point? Given the timeline of events, the criminals at the Capitol weren't there at the ellipse to even hear the president's words. They were more than a mile away engaged in their pre-planned assault on this very building. This was a pre-planned assault, make no mistake. And that is a critical fact. Watch this. Does anyone in this chamber honestly believe that but for the conduct of President Trump, that, that a charge in the article of impeachment that that attack at the Capitol would have occurred. Does anybody believe that? It was not some sort of spontaneous decision by a bunch of, quote, protesters to go up to Capitol Hill and, and storm Capitol Hill. This was all planned out. How much of it was, was planned? How much of this was strategized ahead of time? They are getting indications, uh, some evidence that they've seen that indicates uh, that there was some level of planning. There appears to be premeditation. FBI internal report the day before the siege, warning of a violent war at the Capitol. The FBI issued a warning of a, quote, 
war at the Capitol. The FBI warned law enforcement agencies about this specific attack. Be ready to fight. Congress needs to hear glass breaking, doors being kicked in. We developed some intelligence that a number of individuals were planning to travel to the D.C. area with intentions to cause violence. We immediately shared that information. And they pushed out that information through this JTTF structure. It was immediately disseminated through a written product and briefed our command post operations to all levels of law enforcement. The FBI says two pipe bombs discovered near the Capitol on January 6th were placed there the night before. New video appears to show a person suspected of planting pipe bombs near the U.S. Capitol the night before. The FBI now says the bombs were planted the night before the Capitol siege between 7.30 and 8.30 p.m. They were planted the day before. All goes to the idea yes. of premeditation and coordination right. among individuals. This was a planned assault that kept going after a cancer. So to answer the question of the House manager, does anybody believe that this would have occurred but for the speech from Donald Trump? I do. So to answer the question of the House manager, does anybody believe that this would have occurred but for the speech from Donald Trump? I do. All of these facts make clear the January 6th speech did not cause the riots. The president did not cause the riots. He neither explicitly or implicitly encouraged the use of violence or lawless action, but in fact called for peaceful exercise of every American's First Amendment rights to peacefully assemble and petition their government for redress of grievances. In other words, the Brandenburg Standard is not made out.